All right, man. Guess what's happening, man? What's going on, man? It's another episode of the Reentry Journey. I am your host, Cardell Sims. This is starting off with episode three, man. It's the only right for me to start episode three with um, a, a personal journey of someone that I've seen um, firsthand. We was out on the block together, everything, go through it, and, and, and have to go through it. We had to learn the hard way, in the sense, but I didn't realize and know that this was going to be, or that would actually be a blessing. Um, and, and I'm proud to see the work and stuff that he's out now. He's doing the things, even when he was locked up, you know, he called me, sent me message. You know, ask questions, asking about the books, want to read the books, and to see that you know he took it, <clears throat> took it all and and came out them gates, man. On, on on something else, man, it makes me proud, man, to be to be not only a, a big homie, a big brother, you know, what I'm saying a, a a friend, you know where we stand, man. Uh, my mama love you like you want her own. Uh, so you know. No, no, the man. I like to welcome to the reentry journey, uh, my brother Kit, Mister William Kittle Rogers. Man, welcome to the reentry journey, brother. Thanks, bro. Oh man, just trying to stay afloat, stay out the way, and and keep my goals on a daily basis, and just keep crossing them off that list. Oh yeah, most definitely. And so, you know, one one of the first things I wanna wanna ask you is, um. Can you take us through your journey from growing up, you know what I'm saying, on the block uh, to where you at now? I mean, just on the journey from, let's say, uh, maybe a little bit before After the Rain video. <laughs> just, to, just take yeah. us through that journey from, from then to where you are now. I mean, it was it, every day on the corner, that's all I knew was was slinging, slinging marijuana, slinging crack, trying to make a dollar and thought I was smarter than everybody else. But I knew what I was doing was right, and me and my right hand man just trying to figure it out. We caught our first case. We all caught our first case in '09. Uh, sales to an undercover, and I, I just I didn't take them two years seriously. I was hanging out with the homies, want to work out, play cards, dominoes. Thought it was a joke. I uh, got out 13 days later. No deal, gone bad. Caught a fake case, 144 months. I only I didn't even make it out two weeks. And, and I I take that into account because my first two years I didn't I didn't really know what I was doing I thought oh, I'm gonna get right back out. out first night out I was right on the block like that's what all I knew that's what I loved I was trying to see the homies you know what I'm saying I thought that was the cool thing to do back then and I and I, I it, it took me to sit down for a long stretch in and out uh, of uh, segregation and different many things and going to the feds and realizing like if I want change I gotta I gotta do it for myself Ain't nobody else tell me with me right yeah man I, I I remember them times man I mean it was like it was just kind of like yesterday I mean all of us were just running in and out as soon as we get out man we just go right back to the block catch a lot of cases and, and, and I reflect on that, like, man, we just, just knew what we was doing. That was just it. I, I tell people all the time, man, 15, 10, 15 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be doing the work and doing the stuff that I do now. I'm just looking back. So during your incarceration, like, during that phase of, of going to prison, you know, on, on the, on the uh, undercover officer, getting out, wasn't even out two, two weeks, then, you know what I'm saying, catching a whole another case and doing 12, 13 years. Um, what was one of the most challenging aspects of that 13 years incarceration, you know, and, and how did you overcome it? So I, I would say the overcoming, the, the most challenging thing for me was having to realize that it's time for you to grow up. Because in my mind, I was still 19 years old when I left the street. So when I and my, one day I'd be like, I'm going to get out. I'm going to do this, 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 this. And I'm like, I'm going to be 34, 35 when I get out. I can't do that, that, that. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was just having to grow up in that type of environment with all the negativity, 
having to know that I can't choose that lifestyle no more. And I still struggle, bro. Like, I was in there still like, man, I ain't going to make commentary this week. All right, I'm going to go figure something. I'm going to go flip something real quick, make a couple dollars so I can get some food to eat. So I still had that mentality sometimes back and forth. And it wasn't until probably my last year or two, uh, I called home and then Nancy was like, we have food out here doing good. And that's when I reached out to you, like, bro, I, I need to figure something out. Obviously, you figured it out. I watched you growing up in the street. And you must, you see, it wasn't, it wasn't fit. And you wanted dinner for your life. So where you was going, what you was doing is what I wanted to do. So I was like, man, there's no other way but me to reach out. So reached out and got the book sent. Like you said, uh, one thing that always sticks in my head that you say a lot is I quit reading them urban novels, playing cards, quit putting myself in those situations until I started reading them, them inspirational and motivational books and realizing, like, damn, I already know all that urban knowledge. What if I live that? I, I need to figure something out that I don't know. Most well, definitely. And, and, and that's what it was for me. Like, I couldn't read, like, Man, I'm man. This is my fifth time. I got the Fed case. Like, oh man, here we go. Then it's like, man, what you gonna do? You just gonna be in here reading urban novels again? And I'm like, man, I got, the, I I can't do no more time after this. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? So, I had to, yeah, them urban novels, man. I couldn't read no more of them stories, you know. And so, how has your life, like, how has your perspective on life changed from before to to where you at now? Man, it's changed in so many ways. Like, if I get pulled over for a traffic violation, I'm not worried about it. I'm not thinking, hey, am I going to have to stuff this? Am I going to have to run? What am I going to do? Do I got a warrant? Let me pay. I'm sorry for speeding off a server. Here's my license with my registration. I apologize for that. And and it's just, I don't have that fear of always looking over my shoulder. Is the front door going to get kicked in? I, I don't even, like, I'm still on federal probation, but that doesn't. It doesn't bother me when you have two feet out of that game and you're not trying to go back and forth or you're not trying to be sneaky and think you're smart in the system. You don't got nothing to worry about. You can call me anytime and tell me to go to the And I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't even going to go. Hey, can I get some pins? Can I get this? Can I, I don't got to worry about that. Right. And man, that, and then that, just that, people don't understand just like that part alone. Man, that part alone just feels good to not even have to be worrying about getting sent back because you out here tripping and you, you might have to sconder and be on the run. I uh, don't have to worry about when you get pulled over or if you're dirty and what you know. what I'm saying just them little scenarios. Them was a, 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 a like a somewhat of a stress a stress lifted off your shoulder. Not have to worry about them things no more. No, um, most, no, most definitely. And you, you, you know what I'm saying? You've been out, you've been home probably like almost like two years. What I liked about what, what was that? November 1st to be two years. Yeah. November 1st, yeah. And you know, one thing I liked about it, you know, when you came out, and it's something that I did, like when you came out, you you hit the ground running, you didn't do no faking, like you, you already had your mind made up what you was going to do. You know, and you just went out there and did it. You know, you got your job, what you like doing. And then, you know, you also helping out here and there, sharing your stories in the school and things like that. You know, so what's been the biggest surprise or the learning experience during during this time? So probably the biggest surprise was a few different aspects. Like I filed for early release and I asked for some character witness letters and I've gotten character witness letters from the same gang task force office that I used to hang on the other side of the block when I was out there stealing crack. And he was like, I'm putting my name on to help him get off probation early because I see what he's doing for the community and the youth. And that was just like, you know, you watch us grow up, you know what I'm saying? And I think another thing was for me was being able to go to New York and, and do that podcast, man. I never left the block. Bro. We, didn't, we didn't leave the block, you know what I'm saying? So to go out there and see New York, go to Florida, I'm like, this is for real. This is what life's about. Uh, and that's just, you know, um, 
them little opportunities, like you said, like, I, man, we we really wasn't leaving the block. Like, we was on the block all day, every day. We weren't, we weren't trying to go to New York, no Florida, or none of that. So to get out and change your life around and then at the same time get to travel, see the world, start experiencing new things, man, that's always a plus because, you know what I'm saying, you're growing at the same time. You know, the title you chosen, Look at Us Now, uh, what does this phrase mean to you and how does it reflect your journey? I mean, just to know that not just you or I, like, you know, little bro, Marshall, like, you know, that's, that's like my, that's what came up under, bro. And just to know he got his own LLC now and that he's doing good. And I ain't got to worry about getting a call in the middle of the night, like, bro, we back to here. Like, just to know that we live in proof that it's possible if you put your mind to it and, you put in the work and you have patience, it's going to pay off, bro. Man, put in the work and have patience. Like I tell people all the time, it, it's, it's you got to trust the process, right? And the biggest part of that process is patience. But you got to trust and believe that the work that you're putting in is going to produce the outcome that you want. And you got to have faith in that. Like you got to know that's going to happen. But a lot of times, Guys fall short because they don't have the patience, you know, and that, that that's the big part. So can, can you share a pivotal moment during your incarceration that, well, I guess you kind of really already said it, like you, you were still in that mentality. Then you talked to my mama, you know, mama don't be doing no faith. No, you know no. And she was like, yeah, this and that. And once you got them books, that was kind of your pivotal moment during your incarceration that, started setting you on the path that you're on to now? It was, it was the books because it was like you and bro gave us the game in the streets. And, and that was cool. And now it's like, dang, I got somebody that I really know and grew up with that's giving me the game on where I want to go and where I want my life to be. So it's not like I'm reading a book from anybody I don't know. I'm like, dang, bro, if bro really feels like knowing how he used to be, then it's it's got to be some truth to it. You know what I'm saying? And like, I started, like, I, I still got on my notebooks and I, especially monthly basis, I go back to it and like, hey, man, I really sit down, didn't know what Instagram looked like or Facebook, but I made some social media accounts. I went in there, I got my goals that I used to put on my wall and I could check off three of them two years early. You know, and I still got my vision board that I put in front of me and I would have never known none of those things if it wasn't for reading your book. Right. Mm. I see you. I'll be seeing you out, you know what I'm saying? And it, it kind of reverts back to one of your, your surprise because uh, I see you out there working with Parham. <laughs> you know, back in the day, boy, that was one of our biggest enemies right there. Yeah, uh, Parham, yeah. man, what? But I see you out there doing the work with Parham. And even when I look at, like, even with the, uh, the POs around in the neighborhood and y'all doing the work for the Boys and Girls Club, um, I want to know what's that feeling like and how the relationship um, with the community has changed since your release or since, you know, before when you used to just be on the block. So it's, it's changed a lot because people, when I talk to them now and they're like, they, they had that look like you know, that guy from somewhere, I just can't figure it out. And then when they go and start researching, or if they see me in some stores, like, bro, I got five blocks running down my way. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they're like, oh, I knew I knew that guy was somewhere. But then they're going through and they see me the front page of the newspaper from going to the schools, working with the Boys and Girls Club. They're like, oh, man, it is possible to change. So it gives them a total different look for somebody that's been in our shoes before incarcerated. Hmm. Oh, and w what were some of the uh, resource or support systems that have been most crucial in your reentry process? To be honest with you, bro, it was my, my probation officer. I came home and I showed her my goals, my stuff. And I was like, hey, I need your help. And my wife always supported me the most. Like, that's always going to be my number one support. But my PO was the one that. All right, cool. You really want to do this? Show me you want to do it. A few months in, 
he's like, all right, cool. So we got it set up to, to go speak to the probation patrol here in Sicilia. Spoke to the drug court people there. Uh, she approved it for me to go back into Pettis County Jail and speak to the guys every other Wednesday there. So it was my PO was a big help for me. She helped me with my mental health bro, like helped me get into some counseling. They pay for it and help me get on some meds to make me not like have dreams or nightmares at night. So like at first I was always like, oh, I could do it myself, I didn't need no help. But once I started asking for help or to guide me in the right direction, so many doors opened up. Mm. Yeah, I, I took man, yeah, you gotta utilize your PO. Uh, that's that's one of the biggest things. That's like your first, your first point of contact to the resources to the help that you're gonna need. And so, yeah, that man, I, I'm glad that, that I had that same mentality when I came out to 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 you know don't look at my PO as an enemy and because man, that probably would have hindered me a lot. Um, if you could speak to your younger self before you, your first incarceration, what advice would you give yourself? Don't always believe the hype, man. If, if it if it if it glitters like gold, it's not always sweet. Mm. Believe the hype, <laughs> yeah, man. It's all an illusion out there. It yeah, really, yeah. really is. Yeah. Um, how do you think your experience can help others who are currently incarcerated or just beginning their reentry journey? Just living proof. I've been home two years, still in federal probation. I done did Florida, New York, all the states in between. My PO might show up once every two months for a breathalyzer every two months to go take the urine test. Uh, I done did my negative mentality into a positive. I've been selling, I was in the car, selling cookies in the car business, and now I'm selling motorcycles and ATV, the family owned business for over. 60 years in Sedalia, bro, like, turn that negative into a positive, and, like, not to brag, like, I made a hundred, a hundred thousand in almost a year, bro, fresh out the feds, like, that's, that's not, I didn't make that much selling dope, you know what I'm saying, so, you know so how it, much you got to go eagle, through, eagle. <laughs> you know you want you got to go through trying to make that much money just to sell us some dope, and that, that's, that's, man, that's, that's lovely right there. And, and man, and so um, that that's important because what what you're doing is, like you said, man, you you, you man, your first year out the out the joint, you make a hundred thousand, and it's just that you just switch your mindset. When you switch your mindset, that don't mean your hustle just went away. It's just that you elevated your hustle and you took the same energy, hustle, and effort that you was putting in the streets, you put it into the job, and now you start to see. The benefits of man like this really works, and that gives you more confidence. And so, man, like I definitely can relate. I mean, I ain't come out, I, nah, I no, no, no sales. But is what I also like is 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 you got a job into something that um you 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 knew you was good at and that you that you like doing, and now you are just <laughs> steady uh moving up on that. It wasn't, when I first came home in the halfway house in Springfield, bro, it wasn't always sweet. Like, I was working for, like, 16 bucks an hour driving a truck, taking up donations. And then I, I came here, and I went to Tyson's, and I just trusted the process. And I'm like, one day I'm just like, this is it for me, man. I got on Indeed, and they were hiring for a car uh, a car salesman, and I just sent an application. I never made a resume. I never did none of that. So I just called him. He's like, hey, can you come up here and meet me today? I'm like, I'm on my way right now. I started the next day and we moved back since. Straight up. And what misconceptions that you may have heard um, about formerly incarcerated individuals do you think uh, are most harmful or, or that you hear the most? They always speak about that statistics number and like, oh, you're going to reoffend no matter what. It's just, it's in the nature for that. It's, it's not, it's up to you if you reoffend if you go back to prison. It's not your PO's fault. It's not your brother's fault. Your nobody else's fault. It's your own fault if you go back to prison. Because there's plenty of opportunities out here. It's just what you're gonna do with them. Man, 
lot of opportunities out here. You know, back when we was on the block, man, we used to, we used to measure our success off of uh, cars, money, things of that nature. You know, now that you now that you've been through this journey and on this journey, how has your definition of success changed throughout your journey? Throughout this journey, memories, creating memories with my family that I can't get back. Mm. That's success right there to me. Um, success, like success, no, like no other, man. man. Being able to be there for your family, like now, I you know what I'm saying. I done got old now for real, so I got grandchildren. So being there for my grandchildren as, while they're young. And then now my child, all my children, except for one, are adults. So trying to be there to navigate with them at, through the adulthood phase of their life, especially young adults. And then I still got a, a teenager and ch- trying to understand him in this world and what he's going through. And man, but I'd rather be right here doing what I'm doing than sitting inside that cell, most definitely. You know, because yeah, I, I always felt like, bro, like. That was that was easy. Like for me personally, like that was easily. I can wake up and go to sleep and be in the cell. Like that's that's not hard to do. You can do your time and you'll find a way. This this is where that defines as a man. If you can walk every day and pay your bills and live live life like you're supposed to live life, man. And it, it's only hard out here if you make it. That's it. And so many opportunities. And what I tell people all the time, especially when I go back into prisons and I be speaking, I'm doing my program. What I tell the guys in my class, like, man, it's so easy to um, live comfortable life or so easy um, in the opportunities that are out here. You just have to take advantage of it. Like there's so many different opportunities. You got access to all the knowledge to become whatever you want to become, you can watch a YouTube video, Google, whatever, and it's going to show you how to do just about anything, how you can become about anything. And it's just so many ways to legally make money that it's really up to you. Like, it's really up to you. Like, if you come out and crash, you just didn't really want to put a half an effort into coming out here doing something for yourself. And and that's I tell a lot of the guys that I speak to like when you in prison you gonna go to work for thirty cents a day for them COs but you don't want to go out here and work for yourself like you either gonna work in there or you gonna go to go to the shoot like you figure it out man you gonna have a job you definitely and you most likely when you <laughs> first get there you are gonna be stuck in the kitchen yeah no yeah morning shift, four o'clock. yeah yeah and it's not and ain't gonna put up a fight about it. No, no. And it's just like they I hear them talking about oh minimum wage is just too it's not as much money and it's it's better than me calling home like hey bro, can you send me fifty bucks so I can go to the store? Man. Or or you are, like you say, working down in the kitchen, getting uh twelve fifty a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So man, it's, that's it's, crazy. It's, it's all a mentality, it's all a mindset, what you do and like a big thing for me was is like it's hard because somebody to the forefront might look like they're on the same page and trying to do good, but behind closed doors, they still doing only God knows what. So I don't want to put myself in that situation or predicament. So sometimes I catch myself. I just hang out with my daughter or my wife. If not, I'd be by myself. Right. And that's the best thing. I mean, outside of, if, if I'm not in the um doing some work or doing some business and stuff like that, man, I'm at home just chilling. I don't really need to be doing nothing else, man. Spending time with the family and watch TV, just sitting back, kicking it. I, I, there's nothing else I'm going. If it ain't about business or if it ain't no family function, no event or nothing like that, man, I, yeah, I'm at home, man. That's, that's the best part. I can get peace there. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, I'm away from everything, and I'm cool uh, for me. It, it really ain't no no big thing. I, I mean, like, I think about, like, man, I'm one of what the block. But then I look like, I look back and just like, man, think about all the people that's either locked up or done got killed, you know what I'm saying, ain't here no more, you know what I'm saying? So I just be like, man, I, I was one of the ones that was blessed to make it this far. Why even, 
look back because some of us ain't ain't, ain't get this far. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. That's just that's just what it is, man. I think about that every day. Like I sit in my backyard on my little patio and I just be meditating and I just be thinking about things, how the block once was and everything we went through and just how many ain't, ain't here no more and what it would look like for me or them to be at my age still out there on the block doing all the other crazy stuff. Like, that'd be wild. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, it's just, what I lost just, my life for, for you to be 50 years old still on the block. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, it don't, it don't make no sense, man. Plus, like I said, it's too much out here. Too many opportunities. It's just really about applying yourself. And that's it, man. Applying yourself. People willing to help you. The resources is out here. Um, and it's just really about applying yourself. So no, most just definitely, definitely. Yeah, so that's the crazy part. So it's this one question I always ask everybody on my podcast. Um, usually the last question. And the question is, if you had one word to describe your journey, what would that one word be and why? I'd probably say grateful. Uh, grateful, grateful, for, grateful for the black, grateful for my incarceration, grateful for the things that I went through to teach me the lessons in life that I need to be taught. Grateful for the 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 situations, the long nights I went through to come out and to be able to help that next kid or that next man going through what I went through once. Mm. Most definitely grateful. I read a book uh, called, you know, they got a book called The Secret. They also have a follow-up book. I read this when I was in Base County in the fair case called uh, Attitude. And it was, mm-hmm. it was a book mm-hmm. about it, you had to wake up and do these exercises about gratitude for 28 days. Yeah, man, I, yeah, it was a dope book. Um, Man, that's most definitely. So if, if someone watching this podcast, they, they want to get in contact, you want you to come speak to the school, come speak in the institution or whatever, Um, how can they get in contact with you? Your email address, how can they find you on the on the, on the web? Uh, I got my Instagram, which is K-I-T-T-S-F-R-E-E. K-I-T-T-S-F-R-E-E. My TikTok is Kids Free. My Facebook is just my name, William Kid Rogers. And my email address is William Kidder Rogers 1989 at gmail.com. There you go. Right there, man. I really, I really appreciate you coming on. Oh man, I can't forget this. You know what I'm saying? My podcast get broadcast on the inside as well. So you got any message to the brothers, man, on the inside that's gonna be watching this. You know what I'm saying? Any message, give them a message. Man, fellas, I once once sit in your same shoes. Watching the same TV, playing the same dominoes in the space, man. Get off that card table, get out that idiot box, and put your nose in an educational book, you know, a positive book, and just have a plan for your life when you come home. Set some goals, whether it be a day goal, a year goal, a five year goal. Set yourself a vision plan. Get out here and conquer the world. It's all up to you. Life ain't that hard. It's sweet out here. It's way better than in there. It sure is. Most definitely, man. So, man, thanks for being the guest on the Reentry Journey podcast, man, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the stride step that you're taking, man. I already know that you know what I'm saying. Once you start falling in line in the rotation and sharing your story, man, you know what I'm saying. You're gonna make a lot of impact on a lot of people, man. I'm gonna be right there cheering you on. Anyway, I can help. Good to you. you always. Good to you. Yeah, you always know. Any way I can help, man, feel free to reach out to me. Um. We definitely can make it happen, man. But keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you, man. Um, don't let nobody tell you no difference, man. We came from the same, came from the same place, man. And, so- and if y'all don't believe it, I don't even think bros in this. I'm gonna show you right here. You see that? Man. That's 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 him and his little brother. Who and her? Man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Hey, really big, really big, 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 big
I might throw some flashback or parts of some videos on this episode when I end up mixing it down so they can yeah, see that yeah. might be the intro. I might have some intros, man, just from with the go. It goes along with the title. You know what I'm saying? But, man, bro, man, I'm proud of you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Like I said, man, we're going to work on some things, man. We're going to make some things happen, man, in the community, especially when I get the program into the Pettis County Jail. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but yeah, bro, keep doing what you're doing, man. I'm proud of you, man. And thanks well, for coming on the podcast and sharing your story, man. I love you, too. Hey, this is another episode of the Reentry Journey. Y'all make sure, man, y'all go follow my bro, man. Um and, and, and watch his journey because mm-hmm. even if you get in the journey now, you you're still gonna be in the beginning phases and you'll be able to catch up because man, he, man, bro used to be out there and to see where he's at now and I know where he's going, man. It's 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 a big it's 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 a great thing to see. I know I know my mama proud, I'm proud, you know, and so man, make sure y'all y'all tune in with him, follow him on Instagram, TikTok. Get in contact with you, man. Get him to your school, man, to speak to your or to your organization to speak. I highly recommend it. Um, thanks for everybody for tuning in. This is another episode of the reentry journey, season three. And shout out to the sponsors. We got 62 sponsors, book sponsors. Y'all know the goal was to get a thousand books inside the hands of those incarcerated of my book, It Made the Inspiration. Right now. We got over about 785 books so far with a couple months of the year left. We got over 62 sponsors. Shout out to all the sponsors. If you want to see the sponsors, go to my website, cardiosims.com, sponsor books, and you'll see all the sponsors. Click on their link, see what they do. I appreciate you all. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And this is another episode of the Reentry Journey for the guys on the inside, like I always say. Don't let the limitations of your background reduce the height of your potential. Outgrow what you were born into. It's time to manifest your vision to be the boss of your mission. I'm Cardell Sims, and we out.